You will need the following. Stockinette to protect the patient's skin. Undercast padding so that it is nice and comfortable for the patient. The plaster of Paris itself. Some tepid water at room temperature. A crepe bandage for the final layer. And finally a high arm sling to assist with elevation and optimise the patient's comfort. A back slab plaster of Paris is ideal to apply as a temporary cast until definitive decisions regarding management of the injury have been made. It's relatively light, strong, yet mouldable and allows for swelling in the acute phase. For this arm, we shall use 6 to 8 layers. However, if your patient has a large muscle bulk, then 8 to 10 layers may be needed to achieve stability. Make sure your patient is sitting comfortable and that the arm is at a comfortable level for your back. This height adjustable couch is ideal. First, measure the length of stockinette required. Go from their elbow to the top of their fingers and cut the length accordingly. It should be longer than the plaster length so that it can be reflected back at either end to protect the skin. Next, make a little hole at the landmark of the thumb to allow it to poke through. Cut the hole over the carpometacarpophalangeal joint or knuckle of the thumb, perpendicular to the length of the stockinette. We are now ready to apply the stockinette, all the way on, and then bring it back distal towards the fingers. This method keeps movement to a minimum which may be uncomfortable for your patient. Elevate the patient's arm, which may require an assistant if it's uncomfortable. You may wish to pad out any bony prominences with some felt as seen here, over the ulnar styloid. This just optimises comfort. Starting two fingers breadth distal to the elbow crease, Apply the undercast padding with 50% overlap as you progress, effectively creating two layers. Once you arrive at the base of the thumb, part the padding and come in high over the metacarpal heads. And round underneath the second palmar crease. Repeat this twice. Finish with a turn around proximally. Essentially, that's all the padding you need. Any more, the whole construct will loosen and not give enough compression. Any less, and the plaster will be uncomfortable. Wet the crepe bandage, as this avoids any shrinking over the plaster after this has been applied to the arm. Next, we are ready to size the plaster. Remember, we want it to be slightly shorter than the stocking and padding we have applied. Again, allow two fingers breadth at the elbow crease to allow for articulation of the joint. Measure to the metacarpal heads. Cut the plaster to length and save these to fix the crepe bandage once finished. You will see this later. Cut a semicircle out of what is your intended lateral edge of the plaster to accommodate the thumb. A full rotatory thumb movement is desirable to avoid stiffness. Submerge your plaster in the room temperature water for four to six seconds. Squeeze off the excess water over the bucket. Lay the back slab over the patient's arm as previously planned. Begin to smooth out the plaster from the middle to the edges, removing any air bubbles. If you need to, trim the edges to finish before the undercast padding. Reflect the stockinette and check that the metacarpal heads can be visualised. Check articulation by asking the patient to wiggle their fingers. Reflect the proximal stockinette and padding in a similar fashion. Take the pre-soaked crepe bandage and again, starting at the elbow, work your way towards the fingers. Overlap 50-50 with each turn. At the base of the thumb, trim the bandage to accommodate the digit, passing the bandage through the grip. Do this twice, and work your way back to the elbow. Finish the crepe bandage on the actual back slab surface itself, rather than the underside. Using your offcut saved earlier, submerge in the water for around 4 to 6 seconds. Place over the edge of the crepe and smooth as shown. This will fix it in place. An alternative is to use some pink tape. 
The plaster is dry to touch in 5 to 7 minutes, but takes 24 hours to completely dry. Advise the patient to elevate the arm, move their fingers and keep the plaster dry. Remember to document the neurovascular integrity in the patient's notes before they are discharged. This includes sensation, movement and capillary refill. Finally, pop the wrist into a high arm sling, which helps with any swelling. The hand should be higher than the elbow. Remember to book the patient into Fracture Clinic for a review and where decisions will be made regarding definitive treatment.